Have you ever wondered why the bread has this shape? Bread shape? Hi, I am Gluten Morgan and remember that I am here to help you bake everyday bread at home. Uh, talking about gluten, what is gluten? It's an issue that everyone is talking about that. We have on one side the lovers of the gluten and on the other side the haters of the gluten. So let me explain to you in a musical way. Oh, oh, not ready for the Grammys. Okay, let's go back to the bread. Okay, don't be afraid, I'll stop singing. But let me call my friend, the Dr. Mariana Kopman. She is an expert in chemistry and also in bread. So, Mariana, what is the gluten? Hi, Raymond, how are you doing? Well, what is gluten? Gluten is a net that is formed by two proteins that are present in the flour. But before you wet the flour, those proteins cannot link with each other. When you put uh, the flour with the water, what happens is that it's like start knitting a net between them. So there are unions and associations. Those unions are forever, but the associations are not. Thank you, Marina. Excellent explanation. But talking about gluten, just by itself, the gluten there in the air, it doesn't give the shape of the bread. There's something else. That's the gluten net or the gluten network. But before I explain more about that, let me show you a few experiments. Okay, let's start with this. So we go with the basics. What are the basics? Just some flour and the other ingredient, water. So, as Marina said, where is the gluten? The gluten is in the flour, but it's still sleeping. It's not yet formed. So, in the bowl, we put some flour and we'll add some water. And we'll start stirring this or mixing, no kneading at all, and we'll start developing gluten. It's very easy. We only need to hydrate the flour, not leaving any dry. There. Done. And now, what do we have to do? We just have to wait. And that's all. What do we have to do now? Just wait. But don't worry, I have something already prepared. And it is in this new bowl. What is the difference between this first bowl and the second bowl is the third ingredient. And which is the third ingredient? Time. The difference between this bowl and this bowl is just one hour. So, let me show you something. Let's go to the first bowl, the one that we did at the beginning. Check out this dough. This is not yet a dough. It's a clumsy... No, no, no. This is not yet a dough. And now I want you to see bowl number two. The only difference is the time. From the outside, it looks almost the same, but Let's, oh, do you see what I'm seeing? Hmm, this is a dough. Yes, this is a dough and it's already kneaded. But who did this? It was the time. Amazing, wasn't it? So, what did we see? What you have seen is the famous gluten network. In other words, the dough is already kneaded and it was kneaded by itself or not by itself completely. So the time helped. And this is also called in bakery autolysis or autolyze. But we have some more experiments going on. Let's see the gluten network, but really, really close. Incredible, that was the gluten network but I want you to take a closer look at the gluten. Come with me. In this jar, I have some dough. And if there's dough, there's gluten. Why don't we wash the dough and see the gluten? And this gel that you're watching right now is 
the gluten and its network. Isn't it fascinating? Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home? Then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter, how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it and click the link on the description right now. Now that we've seen the gluten face to face, I want you to tell you that there are different qualities of gluten. I mean the flour, the gluten that's in the flour may differ from one flour to the other. For example, we have different kind of flours all-purpose flour, bread flour, or pizza flour. So I want you to see this new experiment. In this bowl, I have some all-purpose flour mixed just with water, and I let it do the autolyze for just one hour. What you're seeing right now is called the membrane, also called as window pane. This is the gluten network. And what I'm trying to do now is to expand it, to stretch it as much as I can. The idea of this experiment is to keep this membrane intact as much as possible. This shows how extensible this is flour. In this case, as you're seeing, it's not that extensible. It's okay, this is just an all-purpose flour, flour that you can find in every supermarket. Let's move on to the next one. Time for the strong flour, which means this flour has a strong gluten, and let's start stretching it. As you can see, it is strong, we're developing a nice window pane. The membrane is beautiful and see how big it is. This is a good flour for baking high hydration breads. Perfect. Next one. And the third one, the last one, is this pizza flour. When you make pizza, you want a big pizza. So you need to stretch it a lot. And this flour is meant for this. So check this window pane, this membrane, how extendable it is. Wow. Incredible. End of the experiment. Excellent. We've seen what is the gluten and what is the gluten network. So I think it's about time that I sing you a new song about the... Ah, Marina is online. Oh, oh, okay, Marina is online. Tell us what is the gluten network. So what happens when you knead and when you fold? You make those associations and unions. When you stop kneading on or when you stop folding, those associations relax. But you need to build a really good union and some associations to the end of the bread to keep the form. So your loaf will be with a really, really good shape. Thank you, Mariana. As usual, very precise and clear. So now that we know that this gluten network gives the shape of the bread, helps the bread to hold its form, its shape, what else can we do to help this? Well, there are two ways. The first way is by folding the dough. So, as I said, we have to fold the dough into itself. This will make layers of this gluten network and that will strengthen the dough. This is very important to be done after kneading. And the second method is known as lamination. We just put the dough on the counter and we'll start to stretch it as much as we can. The idea is to make this huge membrane, but at the same time, we need to look forward not to tear it apart. The idea is to develop this huge gluten network. Now we're done, we just fold it again into itself, and we're done. So we've learned a lot about gluten and the gluten network, and that is what gives it its shape, to hold its shape. And also the crumb, this airy crumb with these air pockets, super airy, super light and super tasty. But talking about the crumb, Marina, why don't you tell us what is the crumb? The marvelous thing about the crumb is that you can you build a very, very good crumb thanks to the gluten net, but not also the gluten net, but also because of the gelatinization of the starch. What does it mean? That when you heat the dough, the starch absorbs water, so part of it 
come out from the gravel and when you after the cooking and when it cooled down that part of the granola that goes off it can make another net that with the gluten will make a very 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 good run. Bye Marina and thank you. So okay We've learned a little bit about the gluten, the gluten network, and how to maintain our breads with a good shape. So please like this video, share it, give me some comments, and I'll see you on the next one. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.